especially since like, well, for us here in the U.S., usually the people who are asking us where we're from are also American born. So they're just asking, where are you from? And they don't mean Pittsburgh, you know, they want you to say some kind of ethnicity, right? And I've never really liked that because for me, my parents were born here, my grandparents were born here, my great-grandparents were born in Austria, and they moved to the U.S. in the 1890s, okay? Does that make me Austrian? N no. You want to say it, maybe, but no, not really. I'm not Austrian. What am I? I'm American. I don't know, but I, I don't relate to being Austrian. No offense to people from Austria. That is not my point. It's just that I have no connection. There's no culture because I never met my great grandparents. And my grandparents, who I spent a lot of time with, were completely Americanized. You know, they spoke English only, right? They were born in America. So you get what I'm saying? And in truth, when my daughter was in kindergarten, wait, no, no, first grade, they had an ethnicity project and the teacher was asking everyone to get their parents to come in, bring a ethnic dish and tell about their ethnicity. And I mean, it was like for volunteers. And I said, I'm not doing it because I don't have any kind of real, you know, ethnic background to share. But the teacher literally called me up and she's like, would you like to come? Everyone else is doing it. And I was like, I really don't have any, you know, I have no connection to Austria. She's like, well, you could do some research. She literally told me to do some research. And she bullied me. And I spoke to a lot of people and they all told me the same thing that she had called them and said, everyone else is doing it. Everyone's, everyone else's parent is doing it. So I had to look up things about Austria. I had to look up what foods they eat there and find something that I could bring in and give to, you know, a class full of kids. I mean, I did it. I think I brought in some kind of pastry. Some kind of strudel type thing. So anyway, that's my story. Let's see what people say here. Okay, so someone said, I understand that if you don't live in the U.S., you miss out on context. But I never really understood this argument when people say, when people in the U.S. say, I'm Irish or anything else. Generally, it's just shorthand for I have Irish ancestry. Obviously, there are exceptions since some people are oddly hardcore about their ancestry, but generally speaking, yes, people in the U.S. know they aren't actually Irish or whatever they claim as their ancestry. Yeah. And someone said the Irish government disagrees. You can get full Irish citizenship through great-grandparents. Really? So you can go there and get, like, health insurance. It doesn't help me. I'm not Irish. Someone said, as a woman who grew up with parents in the military, I just chose my favorite place we lived at and say I'm from there. I wasn't raised in any one location, so I believe that if you lived somewhere, a part of your heart will always be there and it feels like home to you. That's where you are from. All right, next. Everyone says they have an old soul. No matter who I talk to over the years, anytime the subject comes up, everyone, quote, has an old soul or, quote, I have been told I have 
sister said, so you just repeated it. Someone said, it's generational along the same lines as no worries. I guess it really depends on how bad the situation is, you know? No worries is pretty casual also. Okay, someone said, it's circumstantial based off what the incident was. One phrase will be preferred over the other. Good point. All right. You can just decline a wedding invite if it's inconvenient to you. Too expensive, no plus one, for example. about wedding plus ones. A lot of folks posting about how it's not fair to ask someone who might not know anyone to attend without a plus one, etc. Stuff like that. I keep thinking if a wedding doesn't work for you financially and socially, just don't go. It's completely reasonable to make the decision to keep your wedding small and while it may be perceived to be rude, not to offer everyone a spot to bring a partner or plus one. Wouldn't you be more offended to find out you weren't invited at all because your spot was taken up by someone else's random friend because they didn't want to be alone? I'm not saying don't think about your guest's comfort and some people are obliged to come so you might want to think more about their comfort. E.g. close family, but these things come at a cost to other things, your preferred size, other possible invitees not wanting 50% of your special day to be strangers. Okay, they said a lot there, but their main point was you can just say no. If you're invited and it's not going to be good for you, you can just say no. Oh, really? That is what you think? Well, it really, really depends on your relation to the people who are getting married. If they are your close family, then you pretty much have to go because otherwise you will be shunned and be in a lot of trouble. That's my experience.
I'm 